Cervenius Fibber. And Kathy Lewis as Mom. Hi. In the kitchen. Hi, honey. Hi. Ah, uh, how about my roses, huh? Oh, they're beautiful. Thought you were on a diet. <laughs> I was. But what's the use of trying to be slim and lovely when the spark has gone out of your marriage? Oh, Hazel, why do you say that? Your marriage has lots of spark left in it. Not really. Roy still loves me, you know, but it's not the same. I'm something he's used to. I'm comfortable. I'm like an old shoe. So what's the difference if I'm a fat old shoe or a skinny one? <laughs> what put you in this mood? I went to a lecture this afternoon by Margaret Brock. The author of this book, Secrets for a Successful Marriage. Yeah. Oh, I wish you'd been there. Why? I'm very happy in my marriage. Of course you are. And she explains why you shouldn't be. <laughs> she points out all the, all the problems and the, and the failures and, and all those terrible pitfalls. Sounds like a real fun afternoon. <laughs> Marvelous. Until you hear Mrs. Brock, you just don't realize how much trouble you're in. I'm glad I miss her. <laughs> she tells us why so many marriages break up. She even warns us about the danger signs to look for. Now, one of them is... Ah, uh, am I telling you? You're perfectly happy. That's right. McGee and I have a wonderful marriage. What are some of the danger signs? <laughs> oh, sweetie, I, I didn't mean worry you. Oh, no, I, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm just curious. What are some of the signs? Well, one of them is lack of romantic interest. Mm -hmm. Are you still a woman? Or does your husband look upon you as a pal? I think I'm still a woman. At least McGee kisses me goodnight. We don't shake hands. <laughs> Roy kisses me too. That doesn't mean anything. That's habit. I can always expect to be kissed three times. When he goes to work, when he comes home, and New Year's Eve. That's a danger sign. Bright red and wig wagging. Honey. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Hi, Hazel. Hi. How is the golf game? Oh, terrible. Oh, just awful. It was hot as blazes out there. We had to carry our own clubs. I didn't think I'd make the last three holes. I thought I was going to collapse on the first nine. No, me too. Scorching sun, no water, no shade. Just a brutal day. Miserable. Yeah. Do you make the reservations for next week? Yeah, we see you at the same time. Good. I don't see why you even bother to play. It's our only form of relaxation. <laughs> Oh, would you like to have me make you a pitcher of lemonade? Oh, thanks, Molly, but we've got to get over to the bowling alley. Bowling alley? You just got off the golf course. Well, we want to qualify for the tournament, and the afternoon's the only time we can get a lane. This is my only day off. You don't go in, do you? Yeah, we'll only be about an hour or so. Okay? Oh, no, go, go ahead. Yeah, have fun. Oh, thanks a lot, Molly. You're a real pal. Yeah, and you're a great little sport, honey. Better get going. Well, <laughs> the best. Yeah. Well, pal? Yeah, sport. You know, that's a danger sign. Once we were desirable women. Now we're great pals, real sports, good kids. Next, they'll be giving us cigars instead of candy. <laughs> that book has the answer to every marital problem. I wonder what our category would be. Listen to this. When you begin to notice a lack of interest from your husband, when he is more occupied with golf, fishing, and other outside activities, Molly, there we are. Yeah, there we are. What are we going to do about it? Wait a minute. Here it is. The woman should make every effort to recapture the spirit of courtship. In this way, the fading spark of romance may be rekindled into a bright flame of love which every successful marriage must maintain. Well, we've got to rekindle the flame. Does the book say what we're supposed to use for kindling? <laughs> no, that's on the next page. I don't know about McGee, Hazel. Fifteen years of marriage makes a man pretty fireproof. <laughs> Operation Romance. <laughs> What's that? It's called intoxication. One whiff is guaranteed to send a man reeling with romance. Well, take it easy. You want them to reel but not pass out. <laughs> if it doesn't stir up a few sparks, nothing will. They're walking into a regular fire trap. They're here. Oh, look alluring. <laughs> the music. <laughs> Smell like it. <laughs> 
For goodness sakes, McGee, will you come on in? Why are you sitting in the dark? Hey, you girls having a seance or something? We just thought we'd have a pleasant dinner by the fire with candlelight. We were all dressed up. Champagne. Yeah, I'm glad we left the bowling alley early. I think they were expecting two other guys. Well, they've already been here. I smell after shave lotion. That's perfume. And it's especially for your benefit. Well, I don't get it. What's the occasion? There's no occasion. We just thought we'd do something extra special for you. Ooh. Thanks, Molly. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's great. Well, let's eat, huh? Well, darling, dinner isn't quite ready, so let us just sit down here and relax, huh? McGee, the fight's on. We almost blew it. I don't want to fight. Honey, the state won't title. Get the photograph of your life right. This is the channel. We kindled the flame of love, the book said. They didn't even get warm. Hazel, we should have known. You can't start a fire with two wet blankets. Piggy? Hmm? Do you still feel the way you did before we were married? Of course I do, honey. I feel fine. Gosh, you can't play 18 holes of golf and bowl six games if you don't feel good. No, I guess you can't. However, I have noticed my... Feet get kind of tired lately. First, I got flat feet. I didn't used to have them, but boy, I sure got them now. Why are you so worried about how I feel? I'm not worried. I'm sorry I asked. Who is it? It's Roy. Goodness sake, Roy, you scared Molly half to death. Oh, sorry, McGee. Can I sleep on your couch tonight? Who is it? Uh, it's Roy, honey. I, I think he and Hazel had a little argument. Oh, and it was a pip, too. <laughs> what happened, Roy? She just started acting crazy. First, she wanted me to take her on a moonlight walk. After the rough day you had? That's what I said. Th then, then she wanted me to carry her across the threshold. But the girl just, just snapped her twig. She started talking about the way I treat her. I, I don't stand up when she comes into the room. I, I, I don't pull out her chair for her. And when we come home at night, she has to get out of the car to open the garage door. <laughs> What's she complaining about? I treat Molly the same way and she doesn't mind a bit, do you, honey? Yes, I do. I feel exactly the same way that Hazel does. Just because we're your wives doesn't mean we're not women. Of course you're women. When did I ever say you weren't? It's not what you say, it's what you do. Before we were married, it was different. When I came into a room, you stood up. And when I left the room, you stood up. And, and, and you took me for moonlight walks, and we went dancing. That's why I have flat feet now. We're tired of being taken for granted. We want to be courted and, and won. We've already done that. Well, would it hurt you to do it again? How many times do we have to win you before we can keep you? Why, why do women always get these silly romantic ideas? You, you know, what you've got to realize is once you're married, the chase is over. Right, McGee? Right. Nobody chases his own wife. That's like going to see the same movie twice in one night. I've got news for you. The chase isn't over. It's just begun. Roy, you don't have to worry about sleeping on the couch. You may have my bed. And I'm going over to sleep with Hazel. Molly, wait! And I won't be back until I'm wooed and pursued. Oh, boy, what a night. I didn't sleep a wink. You kept me awake all night long. You always talk in your sleep? I said, do you always talk in your sleep? Mm, what's that? Would you mind putting down that paper and listening to me? That's the least you could do when I'm standing over a hot stove. You sound just like Hazel. I might as well be back home. I might as well be a fry cook and a hamburger joint for all the attention I get from you. Well, hurry up with the breakfast. Those pancakes should be ready by now. They're ready. I'm having a little trouble with them. Stuck to the griddle. Did you grease it first? I didn't think I had to. Pancakes look greasy enough. About time I'm starved. There you are. 
Don't hesitate to ask for seconds. I'm afraid to ask for firsts. Well, dig in. I thought you said you were starved. Oh, I'm not starved enough to eat that. They're not bad if you put enough butter and syrup on them. Hey, McGee, Molly's coming over. Do you think she's begging to come back so soon? Oh, no, no, she just probably wants to see how we're doing. Well, let's pretend that we're doing just fine. Yeah. McGee, I never knew you were such a good cook. Well, this is something I learned from Molly. Oh, these sandwiches are delicious. Hmm. Hey, just, just delicious. <laughs> There's plenty more where they came from, you know. Oh, no, no, no. Eight, eight is my limit. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, hello, Molly. Hello, how are you, Molly? Want to fix you some breakfast? No, no, thank you. No, I, I just came by to pick up some of my things. I thought you two would be out playing golf. Well... It was such a nice day, we just thought we'd stay home and, you know, enjoy it. Oh, this, this husband of yours, Molly, is a wonderful cook. <laughs> oh, you, you want to taste these pancakes. You really like them? Oh, you seem surprised. I am. I, I didn't know that uh, you could make pancakes with starch. <laughs> starch? Oh, I like a breakfast that sticks to your ribs. <laughs> Well, I'll come back later and get my things, all right? All right, uh, uh, Molly. Uh, I, I was thinking it, it might be a good idea if, if we all got together for, for dinner this evening. Oh, oh, by George, what a great idea, McGee. <laughs> yeah, it, it wouldn't have to be anything fancy. No, no, you know, anything that, that you and Hazel would like to fix. Yeah, we're not choosy at all. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know about dinner. Okay, how about breakfast? <laughs> would you really like to see us? Sure do. Why don't you call later and see if we're free? Bye. Now they want us to call and make a date. Well, we can hold out as long as they can. You bet. It's pretty tough not having a man around the house. You're darn right it is. And they know it, too. You bet they do. Except there's one thing that bothers me. What's that? When I look at you, I can't help thinking, what's so good about having a man around the house? Have some starch. Hi, Hazel. This is McGee. Is Molly there? Hi, honey. Look, I'm calling about the dinner. Yeah. Anything... Molly. Yeah, look. McGee, you gotta show a little class. Be smooth, debonair, suave, romance. That's what they want. Now call her back. You, that, that, that isn't my speed, though. All right. Hello. Uh, uh, hello, Mrs. McGee. Uh, you may remember me. I'm Mr. McGee, your husband. <laughs> oh, yes, Mr. McGee. So nice to hear from you. Any special reason you call? Uh, well, yeah, yes, as a matter of fact, there is. I, um, uh, I seem to recall having seen you around the house. And, uh, I thought it would be nice if we renewed an old acquaintance. Uh, that is, if, if you're not, uh, busy. Oh, all right. Uh, seven o'clock? Seven o'clock would be just wonderful. <laughs> uh, 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 see, uh, you don't, uh, I happen to have a friend, do you? Uh, I have a house guest. He's a young attorney, unattached. Very nice fellow. Very... You do? Smashing. See you at seven, then. We'll be looking forward to it. Hazel, they want dinner. We ought to have something extra special. What about roast beef? Do you think that's what they'd like? They've been eating starch. They ought to love roast beef. <laughs> we'll dazzle them with chivalry. Which they never started. Yes. <laughs> Hello, boys. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Norris. I'm Mr. McGee. I'd like you to meet a friend of mine. This is Mr. Norris. Mr. Norris, this is Mrs. Norris. My pleasure, Mrs. Norris. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Norris. Uh, won't you come in? Oh, thank you. I believe you know Mrs. McGee. Mr. McGee? Ah, Mrs. McGee. May I say that you look absolutely ravishing this evening? Thank you. Roast beef. Uh, Mrs. McGee, uh, have you met Mr. Norris? Yes, I've met Mr. Norris. Mrs. Norris, have you met Mr. McGee? 
Yes, uh, uh, Mrs. Norris and I have met. Uh, have you met Mrs. McGee? Oh, yes. yes. Has Mrs. McGee met Mrs. Norris? I think we all know each other. Mrs. Norris, I, I hope you will accept this humble token of my esteem. Oh, thank you. For you, Mrs. McGee, an equally humble token of my esteem, too. Beautiful. Matched only by your own loveliness, my dear. Thank you. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. And all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. A bunch of the boys are whooping it up. <laughs> uh, that's a very good one. And I'm afraid uh, my memory for poetry is not quite what it should be. <laughs> Thanks for trying. <laughs> Why don't we all sit down? After you, my dear. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. May I? Thank you. Light? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I was just going to get an ashtray. Use this. I'd just as soon use an ashtray. Thank you. Oh, uh, here you are, my dear. Thank you. I think dinner is about ready. Would you all like to eat? We had a very heavy lunch. <laughs> I'm starved myself. So am I. Whatever you girls say. May I, Mrs. McGee? Thank you, Mr. McGee. May I, Mrs. Norris? Yes. <laughs> there you are, my dear. Thank you. May I help you? Thank you. Uh, well, this is certainly the way to die. Elegantly, huh? This isn't quite hot enough. I hope you don't mind waiting. Waiting in such charming company is a rare treat. <laughs> I thought if you girls decided to smoke, I wouldn't be caught napping. <laughs> okay, okay. Why don't we start with the salad? Maybe there's something I can do to help. <laughs> For goodness sakes, would you two stop jumping up like that? It makes me nervous. We thought it would. What do you mean, you thought it would? Honey, look. We figured that if you could see this thing in its true light, you'd see how really ridiculous it is. <laughs> is that right? Come on, sit down, relax. <laughs> but we're just a couple of guys having dinner with our wives, that's all. Where's the old roast beef? Bring it out. <laughs> well, this thing is nothing but a big ass. <laughs> <laughs> you were just trying to teach us a lesson. <laughs> uh, did you want to say something to the girls, Roy? Yes, suppose you explain this, Mr. Norris. <laughs> Go ahead, Roy, take a crack at it. Well, Roy, I'm waiting. Waiting in such charming company is a rare... Oh, shut up! <laughs> Honey, look, we just thought if you could see this thing in its true perspective, you'd come to your senses. It's brought me to my senses. Up. 
Out. 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 What do you mean, up, up, out, out? What about the roast beef? It stays here. But we're starving. There's, there's no food over in our house. There's peanut butter in the cupboard. You can make yourself a sandwich. Peanut butter instead of roast beef? I say we stay right here and stand our ground. What do you say? I say... Uh, did you, you make the coffee and I'll make the sandwiches. <laughs> Smell that roast beef. I, I think they purposely left it there just to aggravate us. Come on over here, you can smell it better. I can't think of anything more frustrating than eating peanut butter sandwiches and smelling roast beef. <laughs> Roy, why don't you and I go right over there and beg them to take us back? Never. Never. They've got to come to us. Yeah. <laughs> I think I got an idea. The girls are over there all alone in that house. It's dark, and like all other women, they're frightened, helpless creatures. by to see how you're making out. Roy Norris, you get in this kitchen. You too, McGee. <laughs> you frightened us to death. Yeah, well, I'm pretty shaky myself. I suppose it was your bright idea, Roy. Oh, 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 my, uh, my head. Uh, where am I? Roy, Roy are you all right? Well, you, you oh, gave him a pretty good clout with that oh, broom. Oh, here. Come on, sit oh, down. Sit down here, Roy. Oh, Roy. That's a boy. Roy, darling. Mother? Mother, is that you? Mother? Sweetie, it's Hazel. Oh, hello, Aunt Sophie. <laughs> Did you bring me my sled? Oh. Amnesia. Amnesia? Oh, Molly, what have I done? Maybe we ought to call a doctor. No, 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 doctor. No, I've heard that a very good cure for amnesia is a good night's sleep in a roast beef sandwich. <laughs> Where did you hear that? Hmm? Uh, the, uh, what the ha oh, oh, what, oh, I think I got a fever. Got amnesia, too? No, no, it isn't. I, I think it's a cold from that water you threw. It hot. was hot water. Oh, was it? That's what the darn fever's from the hot in the head. <laughs> oh, oh, sweetheart, are you all right? Who are you? Did somebody get that, please? I'll get that. Hello? Oh, hi, Charlie. What do you mean you're all waiting for us? What poker game? I thought the poker game was tomorrow night. What happened to your amnesia? Well, I, uh, oh, uh, oh, I, everything all of a sudden came back to me. Uh, look, uh, Charlie, uh, you better go ahead without us. Yeah, uh, we have uh, a very important date with two very pretty girls. Right, Roy? Oh, right, McGee. Uh, would you, uh, Come home with me now, honey. Please. Well, I guess if you can turn down a poker game, we must have rekindled something. <laughs> can I stay, honey? Well. I'll uh, take you on that moonlight walk. I'll, I'll even carry you over the threshold, both ways. Look, you kids take your walk. Molly and I better get home. Come on, honey. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night, baby. Oh. 